This is Alex Eubank, and this is how you grow a big chest. Now, unlike myself, Alex is actually known for a pretty big chest. I don't know what it is with me. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to grow. It just could be genetics or my tattoos that cover it. Who knows? Today, we're going to go through Alex's full chest work. I wanted to see. Does his tips and tricks actually work? Or is it something else? I always start off by warming up my chest with an, with, with an isolation movement. So I don't go straight into my bench press. I don't go straight into like a really, really heavy movement. I always try to pre-exhaust. I talk about this in a lot of videos. And this is, I, even you guys tell me how this, after I've told you guys about this, this has made a big difference in your workouts, is pre-exhausting. So what that means is basically finding a pec deck, dumbbell flies. You heard the man. We're starting off with a little bit of a pre-exhaust. First things first is a cable fly. Seated cable fly to be specific enough. Three sets, 15 to 20 reps. You're not going to a complete failure. You're just doing enough to get some blood flow in the chest. Get the muscle activated so you can do your heavy pressing movement. It's not super fatigued, but it's warmed up. This night is cold in the kingdom. I can feel you fade away. From the kitchen to the bathroom sink and your steps keep me the most important with this is doing three sets, 15 to 20 reps. You're pushing it enough to get some blood from the chest, but you're not going to complete failure. You're not going super heavy. It's just a warm up. After you do that pre-exhaustion, that those few sets, you're gonna to want to pick a movement where you're able to have the most amount of mechanical tension, which is the primary driver when it comes to hypertrophy. So that basically what that means is you want to find an exercise where you're gonna be able to recruit the most amount of muscle fibers, and that is gonna be by putting on the most amount of weight. So for a lot of people, that's going to be a dumbbell bench press or a barbell bench press. Now for me, I always like to prioritize incline movements just because a lot of people tend to have a lacking upper chest. All right, next thing is next. We're doing an incline movement. So pick really any incline movement that you connect best with. I'm gonna do incline dumbbell press. A Little bit of a pro tip when you're doing incline dumbbell press. Set the degree of the bench to the lowest possible. So this right here is the lowest incline possible. Some people do it here, even here. As many people do here for incline dumbbell press. The higher you go, the more front delt you get. I wanna get just enough incline to activate that upper chest a little bit, but also minimize the amount of front delt working. So the lowest incline setting possible. We're going four working sets. This first set though, is gonna be a bit of a fuel set between six to eight reps. And that set's not gonna count. They're gonna do four working sets, six to eight reps, to complete failure. Alrighty, first set we've done is 60 pounds between six to eight reps. Next, we're gonna go four working sets, trying to get in that failure zone between a six to eight rep range. I'm thinking we're gonna rock 80s for right now. And then one thing that Alex Zubank says is that he has a progressive system. So if he can hit all four sets, maybe on the higher rep range of about eight reps or so, it'll actually increase the weight next week. So it's a good thing to try and track your workouts, kind of have a mental note or write it down, whatever works best for you, and slowly progressive overload week to week. Okay, I have never bought an actual raw gear shirt. This is actually gifted to me because it didn't fit the person that was supposed to wear it. And it's a bit large on myself and it was too small on him. So it's kind of in this like in-between thing, but the back of this sticks to the bench. I can't like slide my shoulders in the place because the graphic on the back, is like stuck on the bench. It's the most awkward thing ever. Just thought I'd point that out there. So when it comes to like getting raw gear stuff, I'm not using code Alex. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. After that, I'll usually find a movement where I believe I have the best my most connection with. Usually for me, that's going to be a plate loaded press. Um, so I usually would like to go to a flat rate decline, like hammer strength plate loaded press. 
and I'll usually I can usually still I'm still pretty fresh so I can put on the most amount of weight but for this the second movement what I like to do is I like to find a weight that I feel like I can put on like a lot of size with so I'm picking a weight that's still kind of heavy but I want to make sure I can hit at least 10 to 12 reps on it Alrighty, next thing is next is we got the heavy compound movement out of the way we're going to do a little bit of a secondary movement still semi kind of heavy However, we're focused on just a really good mind to muscle connection. 10 to 12 reps here, three to four sets. I'm doing a flat press movement. We have about 45 pounds on there. This machine in itself is already kind of heavy, so I don't need to throw in a whole lot of weight. Just a 45 pound plate is enough to get a good contraction. 10 to 12 reps, really just focus on the mind to muscle connection. Drop the weight. Y'all you, you gotta learn to drop the weight. Too many people I see in the gym, they're wondering why they're not growing bigger chest. It's like, it's just the ego lifting, right? You load too much weight on the, on like the, the Smith, or not the Smith, the, like the plate loaded presses and you're getting maybe like five, six good reps and it's like you're using all lockout like tricep. You gotta really dial it in, really focus on bringing your chest back and together really trying to activate your pec another piece of advice that alex eubank gives is to drop the weight and not literally actually on the machine drop the weight go heavy enough where you can feel the contraction but not too heavy where your ego lifting it's not about how much you can lift it's about how heavy can you make the lightweight feel there's different ways to progressive overload it's not always in weight it can be through time under tension through reps just for the overall control of the movement so focus on getting a really good contraction and then slowly progressive overload from there form first then up the weight it's pretty good huh pretty good little speech yeah if you wanna go then i'll be so lonely if you leave him baby let me down slowly let me down Another piece of advice that he gives is to squeeze your elbows together. I say push your biceps together when you're on a pressing movement or even on a fly movement. The idea is to yes, push through your chest, but almost imagine trying to touch your biceps together on that movement. That's gonna help with the overall contraction of the chest. It's just a good cue to have just to give you a better mind to muscle connection. So whatever thing you have to tell yourself to get a better mind to muscle connection, do it. The last movement usually in the chest workout, I'll pick a isolation movement such as a cable fly where I can really focus on again, stretching my scapula and contracting and breaking my elbows as close as I can together. Usually that movement for me is a cable fly um, or a pec deck works uh, as well, very well. I'll do three to four sets of that, usually around 12 to 15 reps, mainly as a burnout. Alrighty, last and final movement of the chest day is we're doing some sort of cable fly. So I'm going back to what I originally warmed up with because it just feels good. That's another part of this uh, a piece of advice that I'll give is that pick the movements that you connect with the most. If you hate, for example, like myself, I hate flat barbell bench press. I just don't have a good mind to muscle connection with it. I don't like vibe with that movement. I hate to use that word vibe. The point I'm trying to make is that I just don't get a really good mind to muscle connection on that specific movement. For me, dumbbell is way more effective. I get a way bigger pump. Mind to muscle connection is there. I just, I feel that movement a lot more effectively in my chest than if I were to on a flat barbell bench press. So pick the movements that you connect with the most. So you can get a good mind to muscle connection because that ultimately is gonna just give you more gains. If you join the movement more, you can progress at it even more and get better at it. Ultimately, you just grow at the end of the day. But three to four sets here, 12 to 15 reps. We're going until failure, really increase the intensity of this because Alex Eubanks has a really good point. Intensity is key when it comes to training in general. As Greg Doucette says, harder than last time. Intensity is key when it comes to growth and progressive overload. You have to change the intensity. If you could, you know, get 15 reps, but you only do 12, you're leaving gains on the table.
slowly A little sympathy, I hope you can show me If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely If you leave them, baby, let me down slowly so, I finished up with like 12 to 15 reps of a fly, went until I was pretty close to failure, then I did another like five to seven actual presses because I'm stronger on an actual press than a fly. But that's what I mean by intensity. Find a way to increase the intensity of your workouts, whether it's a drop set, training to failure and beyond failure. If you're a beginner, slowly work up to that. But if you're intermediate to advanced, start incorporating some intensifiers whatever the case may be, because you're gonna get more growth out of that. If you're not training to failure and maybe even beyond failure on a couple of your sets in the gym, not all of them, but just a couple, you're leaving gains on the table. Alrighty, chest portion of the workout's done. I'm gonna have a little bit of fun, get some extra credit in, hit some shoulders and a little bit of triceps to go along with this chest workout. If you guys have never tried this, okay, this handle is a really bad back handle. It's like not that great for your back. So I found its design purpose. It makes a great side lateral handle because it puts all of like the weight portion like on the wrist and it just gives you a nasty contraction in the shoulders. Ooh, super side lateral handle right there. Super duper, look at that thing. That thing's sick, that thing's freaking sick. That was the full workout. I'm gonna link the video that I referenced this from in the description down below. Give Alex Eubank a follow if you don't already. You probably already do if you're watching this channel though. I'm wrapping the video up here. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. It's me, your boy Joe. Peace.